The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. Welcome to problem 13A. In this problem, finally we're here. We will explore the financial statements. In this video or this series of videos, it'll be multiple parts, you're gonna learn how to prepare an income statement, a statement of changes in equity, and a balance sheet. We're not gonna to touch the statement of cash flows here, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, before we can jump into the problem, we should understand what all three statements are and what they do. So our first video is just going to explain the three statements, what we're looking for, what we're trying to do, and then we'll actually jump into the problem in the next bunch of videos. So uh, here are the statements that we're kind of worried about here. Income statement, standard of changes in equity, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. And let's start with the income statement. The income statement summarizes, list is, list is, lists out the company's revenues and expenses. So it's all about revenues and expenses. And what this statement does is it captures this relationship. Revenues minus expenses equals net income or profit. So what does the income statement tell us? It tells us if the company was profitable or not. And if they were profitable, how profitable were they? How much money did they make? That's the question that's being answered here. Was the company profitable? If so, how much money did they make? If not, how much money did they lose, right? So when I'm sort of examining a company, I wanna see how they're doing. This is typically a first place I look. I say, hey, did they make any money this year? How much money did they make, right? They make more this year than last year? Look at the income statement. So it tells you how profitable the company is. This is also called the statement of operations and you'll hear it frequently called a P&L, profit and loss, like a profit and loss statement. Uh, and all it is is a list of all the revenues, the stuff the company earned versus all the costs, the expenses, and we say, did the earnings exceed the costs? If so, we were profitable. Okay, moving over to the statement of changes in equity. This one I find to be a little less useful, but we do need to learn how to prepare it. So across the top of the statement of changes in equity, we list all of our shareholders' equity accounts. And in an intro class and in my intro class, I only introduce two accounts. Your prof might introduce different accounts or more. They might label them differently. The two I think that really matter are common shares, CS for common shares and RE retained earnings. Common shares and retained earnings are our two accounts that really matter here. And here's how it works. We say, what did we begin with as a balance? How many dollars worth of common shares? How many dollars worth of retained earnings did I have at the beginning of the period? How did those amounts change? And triangle just means change. And what did I end with? So it says, how did my, what happened to my equity accounts this year? That's what this statement is sort of summarizing for the user. It's saying, what happened to those shareholders' equity accounts? So what did they begin with? How did they change? What did they end with? That's what happens on the statement of changes in equity. The third statement we're going to learn how to prepare is the balance sheet. And this is another super important statement and it is one of the first places I look. I do look at the income statement first, balance sheet is second for me. Uh, the balance sheet lists all of the company's assets. It says, how many assets does the company have? What kind of assets does the company have, right? What are the good stuff that the company owns and controls? That's what we can look up on the balance sheet. It also lists out the company's debts, the liabilities. And finally, it lists out the equity accounts. And what we find on the balance sheet is assets equals liabilities plus equity. That's what makes a balance sheet balance because the two sides are equal. The asset side, the liabilities and equity side. And at the end of the day, that's what makes a balance sheet balance. And so it's sort of good to say, okay, what stuff does the company have? What kind of debts does the company have? That's what we learn by looking at 
the balance sheet. The cash flow statement is one that we don't prepare, at least in my courses I've designed it. Uh, we don't learn that until like module 11. So for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, the reason is it's more complicated, but some courses do put it in module one. And they do sort of a basic version of it and then they come back at it again. I don't even touch it in module one. I will explain what it is. It's a very similar statement of it changes in equity, except it's just for cash. So you say, what amount of cash did I begin with? How did it change? And what did I end with for cash? And there's lots of interesting subtotals and lots of interesting information on there. Why do I have a statement devoted to cash, right? All of my other statements, there's multiple accounts listed. The cash flow statement is all about cash. The reason is two reasons. One, if a company runs out of cash, they're dead. So as a shareholder, you're very interested in how they're managing their money, their physical cash, like or cash in the bank account, because if they run out of that cash, they're dead. Two, uh, it's hard to manipulate cash. So you can manipulate various revenue and expense accounts. Cash is thought of as very difficult to manipulate that number, right? It's not uh, an airy up in the air number. So for example, the value of my car you know, if I said it was $15,000 and somebody else said it's 14 and somebody else might say it's 16 because it's this used car, it's actually hard to argue. And there are numbers like that in accounting where it's like, oh, is the car worth 15? Is it worth 16? Is it worth 13? You know, is this building worth a, you know, a million bucks or is it worth 1.1 million or is it worth 900 grand? You know, it's debatable and reasonable people can disagree. Typically with cash, reasonable people can't disagree. And so the numbers around cash are thought of as very trustworthy. So when a company discloses its cash flow, you can really trust those numbers. So a lot of times analysts and investors really like to see those cash flow numbers. They think they're more honest than say income statement numbers. But we're leaving those for later. In module one, I don't touch this, touch this at all. When we get back to the problem, we're gonna prepare an income statement a statement of changes in equity and a balance sheet. So we'll do that. We'll begin to do that in the next video. Stay tuned.